Mama chatu jende na yanga Na yangire kugandirwa na vreine Kavani za wamarume na mawento Changira matungu vuga ya nive Mama chatu jende na yanga Na yangire kugandirwa na vreine Na vreine Uganda has 1.4 million refugees as of 2021. Of these, 52% are women, 23% are youth, with the majority being South Sudanese. They work mainly in the informal sector due to the challenges they face and encounter like language barrier, lack of required experience, discrimination based on nationality, gender and sexuality. This has led to more refugees joining the creative industries, but they face difficulties there as well. One time I had to go to a birthday party to cover, to get the coverage, <clears throat> but uh, something happened. Uh, I got robbed. I got robbed by two men. Yeah, one, uh, one was actually a con man. He stood at the roadside, by the roadside. As I'm going to the bus park, he actually stopped me and he's trying to talk to me, you know, so that his partner can come and find him. Because I'm still talking to him, uh, the partner just came from behind with a bike on a motorcycle. He, he hit me from the back of my head and he grabbed my bag, which possessed my cameras, phone and some of um, uh, my stuff. Then they actually they fled off with my bag leaving me on the ground helpless and it just took me like to, the, uh, to zero. I had to start again from the start. I do reggae raga dancer. Sub J. I like uh, calling myself a Suda Dance King because I've introduced my own musical style that is called Suda Dance. Sud in Arabic means black, then dance in English. So I rather call my music Suda Dance than call it Dancer. So nickname the 15 star Suda Dance King. So basically that is me. Um, literally about the COVID-19 and the lockdown. Those are, for me they are not difficulties, but those are challenges, you know. Challenges come in life. Uh, they come and go, you pass them. So what COVID-19 has brought to the art industry basically, not only music, but art in general. Gender-based violence is more of violation of your right based on your gender, you see? Well, everything was locked down. I would sell my jewelry and I would take care of my other siblings at home. But because of COVID-19, I was really affected in a way that we would not eat anything at home. We had no money and everything was closed down. I would have no way to access people and give them my jewelry because I was selling jewelry. So it became so hard for us as a family because being alone with the siblings and you, didn't, you don't even have anything to give them was so hard. We would take days without eating, no food. But because of Sima Africa, refugees were thought about and were able to get at least food relief and that helped us as refugees here in Uganda and we're able to smile again. No. And I am an artist. I used to do photographing and video editing and video shooting. COVID-19 affected me a lot. I used to do some work like photographing. I used to go to wedding, wedding centers, wedding. I used to shoot when they are going to events just to I use my own transport, like going to Mnyonyo, there to take my cameras and, uh, and ask your customers like whether they want a photo or not. I ask them and they tell me whether they want, I start taking photos. Though even they, sometimes they usually tell us that they don't have money, they, they, they usually pay us low, they, they tell us that we're not getting money, some of us they tell as let it be debt, like we will pay later on when you when we get our our photos. But we are still surviving on it. Yeah, even now I'm I'm still trying like to do an online English courses. 
to those my colleagues who are in uh, Somal to do for them those courses and they pay there me plus the teacher they pay us so I'm now pro I'm now doing that program like uh, we are not doing online classes I want to run with online classes my family wants me to, wants me to get married so father brought to me the first man rejected me because of my height he wanted someone taller than me then the second man that has brought he didn't want to get married to me because he, he didn't want me to get married to him because I was an activist. I was so open-minded, I was going to give him hard time. So he left me and that's how I, I survived. I felt so bad, like I felt devastated. I didn't expect this from my family. So they, they think that it's better for me to get married than rather stay at home. You know, there is a moment I, I could have died because of there is no food, there is no money I could, uh, I could buy any food, something. Yeah, those, those challenges. After the things covered, I'm still in the meanwhile living with my parents right now. There is a time on, I couldn't even talk, but thanks, now I can speak my own. I know there is nothing I can challenge because as long as I'm speaking, it was hard and difficult for people to access women to come. Like I was telling my friend here, during the lockdown, people will start working either at the 8 in the morning and reaching the camp at the 8 in the evening. The whole day you'll be moving. And the people, the host community also, they can, they can like, they will rob people on the way. That, yeah, they will take properties from you, either good things that they have seen, and they, they, it read to accents like they were almost raped some women walking mm -hmm. on their way. And also on the side of soldiers, like when, when people reach there to receive their protection, coming back, the soldiers were taking money. Security people were taking the only money that make you to walk from the from town going to come, come to come and help your children, you find it is already taken on the way. That was the hardest things you find the women were crying seriously. You find like you were walking but the so the, the samples are, are worn off. We are walking barefooted and you find the people were really bleeding, eh? the serious bleeding. So this is what people went through. And in the same place like when you went to your already rich they come. Making the, the real process of getting the food or the money because other people have already, already registered to receive money. In the process, they will just like you will look like an animal because they will be like we run at this time and in the sun heat. Let me tell you, in the camp it is better here. There is no good water. The water there is sour. Also there, there is what is called a serious sun heat. It is very hot. And in, imagine you will stand in the sun heat for something like around five or six hours. Even that money is not enough to feed you and treat you. So that was what was taking place. And also there, there was, there was no cars to help people to come to, to town. So sicknesses were like sicknesses. Someone could not access because it was like one ambulance serving the whole camps. So seeing that situation was hard, we were losing seriously. And you see, like from there, when you see someone has you have lost someone and you see that a problem has come up, you see people were committing suicide. And they, 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 we have we have youth who are the head of the families. You see, like you are the you are the head of the family. What will you do? That was a serious suffering. So people gave up in life. Actually, let me say, people have given up. It is only God to just give hope to the people in the country. The change begins with us. As a girl, me myself, I have some talent that that is God given. Why don't I showcase it? Why, why don't I do it practically so that I can earn from it? In most cases, we are only, we are, we are only talking about like, the government should do this and this. The government is already doing their part. But if we are not creative enough to do something that can help you personally 
and you just want the government to do it for you, you will keep suffering. So it is very important for us to be creative. If you're good at farming, go for it. If you're good at art, do it. Whatever it is, be creative enough to support yourself, then the rest will be handled. Yeah, you know, right now we're seeing a lot of, uh, there's a lot of backlog, you know, of cases of violence in the police station. You know? There are a lot of statements written, but none of, a few have been reported for further adjudication and all that. So the government should invest more in the police for efficiency, you know. At least if I come and I report a case, that case should at least be heard very fast, you know. Because right now, I think most of us have given up in the police, you know, those guys in the, in the village, you know. So today, if your wife beats you or your husband beats you, you're going to find out, I cannot go to the police because I'm not going to do anything at the end of the day. Yeah? So that's one, investing in the police. The other one was on the food relief. There's corruption. You guys failed to take that point. It's very crucial. Mm -hmm. Corruption. We're seeing there's a lot of food that is distributed to the camps, yeah. But we're seeing some government officials. I think that was like 2015 or 2016, where we had this kind of uh, OPM, you know, guys took food, then money and all that. So that was corruption. It's it's the education that they gave you, that has given you the 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 audacity for you to talk back at me, to. Because I was trying to, I was trying to exchange views with him. I was like, I was trying to, to exchange views with him, but he took it the other way. He felt attacked. He felt, he felt like I was knowing so much. I was wisecking. That's what they all say. They're, oh, you're wisecking. You don't know a lot. No, it's actually not like that. I want us to come to a society, like right now. The resolutions is for us to unlearn the the things our parents taught us when we were growing. Like those things of, oh, you're a girl, you don't have to be loud. No, be loud because you want to be loud. Those are the things. I want us to start accepting ourselves. If, you, if you're not a person who likes wearing sh long clothes, wear what you want to wear. Because where I come from, like you can't wear like this. It's, 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 it's really absurd. They will look at you and they'll be like, hang a bit here. Like, who will marry you? Like, and who will marry you? And you're like, people are there, you know? It's, 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 and actually these things affect us psychologically, you know? Because, because your mom told you, oh, who will marry you? You're like, oh, my mom has already said nobody will, will marry me. So you, there's a way you look down at yourself and it breaks our spirit, it breaks our self-esteem. And I want us to really unlearn such things. Let's be ourselves, let's brace ourselves. Um, I'm at a party and I'm looking nice. And you're there, Ganika, and you're like, oh, Pamela, you're looking sexy. That might not hit me like a stranger in town pulling me and saying, size young, hey, you are looking sexy. Really? <laughs> so, oh, no, 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 no. So they're, they're, what I'm trying to say is that the comments coming from a place where you do not expect them to be coming from is a bit violating because you're there, someone is pulling you, touching you, just imagine you're walking on, you just minding your own business, walking your things. Someone comes and taps your ass, hey, you're sexy and all that, how would you feel? You feel so dirty. Hmm? No, either, most, most of the times, let me tell you from experience. Hmm? Most of the times it's both. Someone is tapping your ass as they are pulling you, as they are shouting. So it's, it's, of course you don't know because you're a man. But for us girls, everyone here can relate. Everyone can relate. So it becomes a bit, you feel, you feel bad. You feel that, you feel like, why, why do they have to do this to me? No, it's not funny. Because it really, you, when you experience that thing, you really feel bad. Like, why do they have to do this to me? Yeah. Okay. This is a scenario where there are two girls, me and her. I'm telling you you're handsome, she's telling you you're sexy. As a girl, I don't deserve to go through what I'm going through because it wasn't my choice to be a girl. And 
Marriage should be by choice, not by force. So if I was to ever get any help, it would be financial help. Because it's one thing I would, or even I just... So I've continued to witness a lot of fighting between families due to this. And this is actually because of COVID-19. Previously, such practices are, are reducing a little bit. The rate that has been happening was not so high like this now. And then, of course, people are getting to indulge into drinking. And when you, of course, drunk, it is there is a high chance for influence into GMV cases. And um, our young uh, girls, especially not only girls, even the boys themselves, now they are frustrated. Like there is a lot of trauma. Now this trauma could come from the the aspect of staying home, no access to schools. You become so uh, bored, there's nothing to do. Another challenge would come into now getting to practice certain things that are not good. And then in this aspect, there's a lot of misinformation that has been happening even about COVID-19. Some people say when you're affected with COVID-19, you become you you become important, but you can't produce. Now this has led into like so many of our young girls there and young boys getting into practicing certain things that yes, at least if this is going to cut me, it will find me, it should better get me when I have, at least have a child. And then at the end of the day, you find these practices are happening and, 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 and like they just get early pregnancies and, and drop out from school. So there's a lot of misinformation that is happening about COVID-19 that there's a need to fight about that. And these are some of the cases also contributing to GB. But some masks as simply who we are. There was a total lockdown in Uganda and uh, it was a breakthrough for me because it was hard for me to get clients. Actually, I had clients but I had to counsel with them because during COVID we were told not to touch your hands and forget about touching your other fellow human beings. So it was hard for me because I actually bought all the stuff I needed to work on a client for a year and it was very hard for me to get a client to work on and the the clients that I had I had to counsel with them because of COVID and the precautions that we were supposed to take. I usually buy my my Hina packs as a wholesale and I usually buy for six, uh, six months or one year and uh, when I was unable to get a client it was hard for me to get the initial money, the capital that I bought the things. I used to clean the office and sometimes I could go and help Santa in her house. Then from there I used to see models coming in Then I also picked an interest. I'm like, eh, I think I have the body, I have the height, I should also go and join modeling. But I was not paid. Like sometimes they give you like 10,000 and my salary was actually 40,000 per month. I meet friends like maybe at where I go for fashion shows, then they also try to connect me to other designers. Then I remember one time meeting Sima Africa, Natasha, and yeah, she liked me and she started calling me for fashion shows in Silk, then I could always go. Every time she calls me, I go. So she tried to promote me and up to where I am today, like to achieve my goal. Mm -hmm. Women and girls have been the most affected during the COVID-19 pandemic. And this is because most of them have become caregivers to those who are sick within their families. They are also facing different forms of physical and sexual violence during this COVID-19 pandemic. You know, we need to shed light on gender-based violence, violence against women and girls, child marriage, gender inequalities, police brutality, period poverty in creative spaces that we run. I decided to write online to start a blog and although it's not bringing in any money right now, I'm hopeful that in the future things could change because as people get to know, as people get to discover the blog, as people get to love you, the content you're putting out there, things could change. Time is going to come when things change. And, and yeah, we're waiting for that. <laughs> So I collected their numbers and I told them that I'm going to do a campaign, I will talk to some friends and family members. So anyone that will be in position to contribute something, I will buy food and bring to you. There were three women and one boy.
So they told me they came all the way from that side of the way, they're going to Old Campbell and they were walking. And so I decided to give them some money to, to get a taxi to take them back. So I went back and then I got home, I did a campaign, I talked to some friends and, and some family members. And then we contributed some money. And after about, I think about two to three weeks, I was able to send some friends. I was so occupied that I couldn't go to them. But I sent some friends who got for them food and the food was taken to them. So I, I think that is a very great challenge because it was a time the government of Uganda was supplying food to the nationals, but the refugees were just left hungry. And I saw it a very big challenge during the pandemic and especially during the lockdown. But if I can get material to continue with my artwork, I can concentrate and also because to me, art is a healing therapy. Like when I do art, like I try to forget like the problems I, I have and also the situation like happening in my home country. So now when I don't have material to do that work, it means that I'm going to end up in stress and day by day, which is affecting my health mentally. And also I cannot concentrate because I have mental problem like that stress. You know, so really we are grateful to be on a continent infusing, you know, vibrant, cool, fresh, you know, using hip hop culture, of course, uh, to ensure that culture is preserved, that languages are encouraged, and that our authenticity is paramount in everything that we are doing as young Africans. You know, so really we are grateful to be on a continent infusing, you know, vibrant, cool, fresh, you know, using hip hop culture, of course. Uh, to ensure that culture is preserved, that languages are encouraged, and that our authenticity is paramount in everything that we are doing as young Africans. No, man, it's a uh, COVID season. Uh, we fighting to breathe, as uh, some of us are trying to survive. But at the end of the day, we must continue working. So we are here putting in work. I'll be out to my girl swimming. But I'm still doing work. You know, we gotta get the fresh chicken. You know, fresh chicken. We are a generation of youth coming together to create art, to raise our voices and challenge narratives. We create content that is critical to conversations that are being echoed in homes, in neighborhoods, in streets, in halls of power, and whispered in the dark. We are refugees. We are different. We are trans. We are creatives. We are here to stay. We are here to rise. 2019 has hugely impacted my work in terms of concerts, you know, as artists. We majorly rely on gigs, getting opportunities to do concerts. And unfortunately, due to the prevalence of COVID-19, there was a lockdown in the entire country. We don't have access to organize shows, even social gatherings where we earn from as artists. So this has really made things difficult for me in particular, even sustainability. Getting to studio to produce songs has become a little bit difficult because we cannot access studios as well. The concerts is one of the major parts that I am from. Now, um, in the period of the six months, I was unable, even until now, is about a year when COVID actually uh, was identified in this country and everything was shut down. I had about four gigs that I'm supposed to lead to, and each at least I was getting about 500. Because if I'm able to produce content, and then put it out on YouTube, people are able to, to, to view and watch. At least I get paid for that, the times that I've been watched. But this has not been an easy case because you could not have access to social media. Hello, I'm Eski Benajuna. You can call me Benaj Wolf. I'm a photographer. I love photography. And uh, I'm a South Sudanese refugee living in Uganda. Thank you.